Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Dear? Mm, lie still, I'll go. No, no, I'll go. I just wanted to know if you heard the bell, too, or if I was dreaming. What time is it? Five after seven. Who can it be this hour of the morning? Where's my robe? On the hook in the bathroom. Don't let the kitten out, though. Oh, David, won't it be nice someday to have our own apartment and see the sunshine when you wake up? What makes you think we will? Somebody's got to live in the dark apartments in New York. It won't be us. I don't care if I live in a cellar. I'm going to have the sun. You mean the attic. Hey, the kitten's sound asleep on my bathrobe. Isn't that smart? He must have pulled it down off the hook. Very smart. Hey, look, Mr. Cat, if you don't mind. And no back talk. David, we have to find a name for it. That we do. Say, who can that be? Oh, telegram. Telegram? Who from? I'll tell you when I find out. Well, open it. Hurry up. Come on, quick. Hmm. Hartley and Julia. From London. Well, what do you know? They're flying back. They'll be home this afternoon. But I thought they expected to be away for another few weeks. Yeah, so did I. Anyway, I'm glad they changed their minds. I can't wait to meet them. Well, that's good. Look, darling. Uh, the place is freezing. Run back to bed. I'll turn on the radiator. Hey, David, don't turn that one on at least. Oh, this is an awful way to live. Leaking radiators, dark rooms, no privacy, paint peeling off in this dreadful furniture. In the light of a cold, bleak November morning, it doesn't look too pleasant, I'll admit. A home is an awfully important part of a person's life. The more, the more I, I live bet... in this apartment, the more I realize it. Have Julian Hartley a nice home? Oh, very. I think we ought to run over there this afternoon for a minute. Oh, let David, isn't there anything I could do before their play- plane gets in? Such as? Oh, have things in the icebox, eggs, milk, butter. I don't think so, darling. The house has been left open, and I imagine Julia's icebox is pretty well stocked. Well, do you think they'd like to come over here for dinner? I can manage. I imagine they'll probably be glad to stay home after being away so long. I know I would. Darling, don't you really want a cup of nice hot coffee? Sort of dividend before breakfast. Lady, I would give my eye teeth for a cup of nice hot coffee. Why didn't you say so instead of encouraging me to run back to bed? Oh, I'm bashful. <laughs> Since when? <laughs> say, David, look at me as if you'd never seen me before. All right. I'm an utter stranger. I've never seen you before. Why, you little hussy. <laughs> David, please be serious. Listen, would you consider me pretty? Mm, pretty. Pretty what? Pretty, pretty. Oh, skip that one. Would you consider me an... Uh, bright, no. You're going to get no coffee. Goodbye. Hey, come back. You're beautiful, brilliant, and bewitching. What else begins with B? Bedazzling? Uh, bedazzling. Come here, my bedazzling little wife. David, listen, I really mean it. I, I've got stage fright about meeting Julia and Hartley. After all, they're practically my father and mother-in-law. Now, how do you figure that one out? Well, Hartley's your only brother, and he's... Fourteen years older than you are. You told me he's been like a father to you all your life. But uh, Julia would not like to be placed in the category of my mother. Julia does not like children. Really not? No, that's not fair. I don't think she could have any. Oh, poor thing. She's awfully blue-bloodish, isn't she? I mean, it sort of sticks out. You mean, uh, does she say bean for Ben? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, but she was born saying it, so one forgives her. Mm, I see what you mean. Do you think she's going to think you're married a little nobody? Just because you don't say Bean for Ben? No, if she does, though, we'll just introduce her to your mother. That's a sweet thing to say. Anyway, you didn't mean a little nobody. You meant a little somebody. I meant that Julia probably had a dozen debutantes lined up for you to marry. No, just one. Well, you never told me about her. Was she attractive? If you like the type. She had a very deep, husky voice. That's nice. And a winter place in Palm Beach and a summer place in Bar Harbor. <gasps> she sounds perfect. But she didn't have very much of a chin and no sense of humor. Now, 
Hurry up. Get that coffee. David, don't ring the bell yet. The wind's got my hair all mussed up. Your hair is fine. Hey, wait a minute. My ear show? Your what? My ear. Is it supposed to? No, you know I don't wear my hair so my ears show. The left one peeks out a little. Oh, that's what I meant. Just a minute, I don't Too late. That. In Julia's house, the servants are psychic. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Norton. Well, hello, Watson. Very nice to see you again, sir. This is Mrs. Norton, Watson. Yes, sir, I thought so, sir. I'd like to wish you both all the luck and happiness in the world. Thank you, Watson. Does Mr. Norton expect you, sir? No, we just dropped in. I was afraid of that, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Norton are just leaving. Uh, But if you'll step in the drawing room, I'll hurry and tell them you're here. How can they be leaving if they just came home? That's Julia. Oh. (gasps) David, what a wonderful room. Isn't it? That wallpaper is 18th century. Oh, it's like... Poetry. David, you never told me they lived in this kind of a house. It's like a museum. Wait till you see the library. Hartley's been collecting folios and first editions for years. Does he read them? I don't think so. They're too expensive. I went to an auction once with him, and he bought a first folio of Shakespeare for $22,000, just like that, without batting an eyelash. $22,000 for a volume of Shakespeare without batting an eyelash? Worth it, too. Partly it's not a banker for nothing. It's a good investment. What'd Julia say? She approved. Julia's got a good business head on those sleek shoulders. Shh, I hear them coming. Well, David, my lad. Hello, Hartley. How are you, boy? Oh, Glad to you. see you. David. And Hello. Claudia. Claudia. How nice. How terribly nice. Claudia, let me look at you. David, she's a lamb. I think I'm entitled to a kiss. Of course. You don't look like David at all. Yeah, I, I could tell your brother's under the skin. <laughs> That's very gratifying. Thank you, my dear. Uh, look here, I'm sorry we came in on you like this. You two look like you were bound for some place. Well, sit down for a minute anyway. It's such a nuisance. We've got to go to a cocktail party for Lord and Lady Radcliffe. We met oh. them abroad. And tonight, Baritz is giving a concert at Carnegie. We've got to be there. She'd never forgive us. Is that why you shortened your trip and came home? <laughs> Only partially. Hartley wasn't agreeing too well with the London fogs. Oh. Sinus began to kick up, you know. Well, you look fine, both of you. Uh, how, how do you think David looks? Fine, fine. Looks like you've been taking very good care of him. <laughs> Tell us about your apartment, Claudia. David wrote us that you'd found a furnished place. Oh, it's the worst little hole in the wall. Really? But it's a very nice building, as I remember. The neighborhood is excellent. I know, but this particular apartment happens to be on the second floor rear. Dark <laughs> as pitch. And the most... Dreadful furnishing. I should think you children would have wanted to start out with your own furnishing. Oh, we did. There's a housing shortage, Hartley. Oh, yes, of course, of course. We bought this place so many years ago, I've been spoiled. Oh, it's so beautiful. What kind of dogs do you have? What kind of what? Dogs. Dogs? My, none. New York is no place to keep dogs. But it's such a big house. You must have a yard. Yes, we have. As a matter of fact, we had the garden done over while we were gone. Wait till you come again soon, and we'll show you. What kind of a dog have you got, my dear? David was always crazy about dogs. Well, we we happened to get a most beautiful Newfoundland. A Newfoundland? Mm Mm-hmm. In a tiny apartment? Yep. It was a little crowded, but we didn't mind. The owner wanted him back, though, so after a couple of days, we had to give him up. It was quite a blow to both of us. Major was a swell pup. (laughs) You're both completely mad. Now we only have a little kitten. David bought him for me last week. The car's here, sir. Oh, Oh, dear. Uh, no hurry, no hurry. Don't you children rush away now. Plenty of time. No, we, we mustn't keep you. We, we should have telephoned before we came. Matter of fact, we should have phoned you. We would have, too, but the clipper was late, and I just about had time for steam. Julia had her masseuse waiting for her. You come for dinner next week. A wedding dinner. A bit late, but after all, David ran off and got married so fast, we never even had a chance to meet you. I, I hope you're not disappointed. Disappointed? <laughs> On the contrary, my child. You're I... very sweet. You don't know how sweet, Julia. She wanted to come over before you got here and stock your ice box. Oh, David, why'd you tell him that? Because I love you. Well, shall we ring and let our butler open the door for us? No, we'll just use our key. Good. We'll use our key. 
Put up the light, darling. Oh, the radiator's leaking. The mm, place is cold, too. I tell you what, let's go out for dinner. Oh, David, must we? Must we what? Go out to dinner. It's so nice to be home. Leaking radiators and all? What'd you expect? The place has missed us. We were away for an hour. It got cold and damp. Just think Hartley and Julia were away for months, and their house never even knew they were gone. Just kept on running. I'd hate to have a house like that. It's so ungrateful of it, isn't it? Hey, David, it is cold in here, isn't it? Let's eat supper in the kitchen. It'll be warm and fun. To have supper in the kitchen with you, Mrs. Norton, would not only be warm and fun, it would be an honor. David, you really mean it? I really mean it, darling. I'm so glad we're us. I feel so rich. So do I. Even though I can't buy a Shakespeare folio for $22,000... Guess we're crazy. <laughs> I guess we are. <laughs> Aren't you even a little bit envious of Hartley's and Julia's gorgeous house? That's all there is to it—a gorgeous house with nothing alive in it but servants. I bet it hasn't even got a mouse in it. Say, talking of mice, look who's here. Oh, will you look at the size of it coming <laughs> out to me? Oh, you precious <laughs> little ball of fur! Will you look at me? So glad mommy came. Claudia, oh, you stop sweet. it before I commit an act of. Cold-blooded oh. murder. What's the matter? I take back every nice thing I've ever said about you. My cup of bitterness runneth over that I am married to a woman who talks baby talk to a cat. The next thing you know, you'll be talking it to me. You have a very exaggerated opinion of yourself, hasn't he, Snookums? I should talk baby talk to him. Who does he think he is, anyway? Snookums? S don't make a sissy out of him. Give him a respectable name and let him grow up like a decent human being. I can't think of a name good enough for him. What's the matter with the uh, Rover? He roved out to Oh, us. Rover, that's a dog's name. I wouldn't even give a dog that name. Snookums, do you want to be called Rover? He doesn't. Uh, come here, you. Come to your pappy. Come on, come on. Hey, you little monster, you've got claws already. Do you know it? Say, say, what, what do you think you're doing? That's my tie. Let go. You're practically talking baby talk yourself. Why don't you give him a name? Well, all right. Uh, let's see now. How about um, Leo the Lion? Leo the Lion? I wouldn't hear of it. I want something, something, something important for him. Something in the, uh, say, $22,000 bracket, perhaps? 22000 Yes. Shakespeare? Shakespeare? Shakespeare. Oh! <laughs> All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. Have you noticed how many more of those familiar red coolers have been appearing in food stores lately? They are there so you can pause when you're marketing and have an ice-cold Coca-Cola. Then you can shop refreshed. And that cool, refreshing drink will remind you to take Coca-Cola home to the family. Have your grocer or service station attendant put a case in your car. Then you'll be certain always to have plenty on hand for the hospitable pause that refreshes. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.